Welcome to City of Petoskey's City Council meeting for December 19th, 2022. Please rise with me for the Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag of the United States. Pledge of Allegiance to the Republic of the United States of America and to the Republic of the United States. One nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice. Thank you. Ms. Beck, would you call roll? Demar Present. Shield. Here. Wagner. Walker. Present. We have a thing. Next, I would like to have three police chiefs, public safety directors, et cetera, whatever you, you service for Harbor Springs, uh, Alpena, and Mackinac City. Would you guys all step to the mic? Push the mic. Uh, to green. Yep. There we go. I'm designated to go for San Carlos and the chief at Harbor Springs. And obviously, you guys do things better than we do because we have a council meeting tonight, and there's probably 30 people in attendance, and you only have five people here. So, kudos to you. Over there, there's going to be a lot of people over there that are moving. So, kudos to you. But I'm Kyle Knight. I'm the chief of Harbor Springs. I, I'm just here to speak briefly about and direct the uh, My son in law. Uh, is a Ben Carlson, a public safety officer, and has worked under Chief Breed throughout the years for 16 years. And he spoke to me before I came up here in 17, just about before Director Breed was a director, even about him as a public safety uh, lieutenant, about how well he was and how good a person he was. And then I was privileged enough to get the job over there. I came up here in 17, and I saw it firsthand. And so I just want to give um, Director Breed kudos for that. Um, he welcomed me up here. The other thing I'd like to say is when I moved up here in 17, I knew nobody in Harbor Springs and a few people over here. And um, I reached out to him a couple of times and said, what about this or what about this? And he sort of steered me in the right direction. And I just want to say kudos for that because this was all new. Up north is different than down south. And uh, it was all new to me and he was very welcoming. So I'm glad that he's retired. I'm going to miss him. But it's, the last thing I'll say is it's a tribute to have all these guys here. That's the type of boss he was. And um, they all showed up tonight. To, to pay honor to him as well. So thanks for your time and Director Bruni, thank you. Well, good good evening and thank you again for this opportunity to speak tonight and for being so accommodating to us. Uh, just some real quick introductions again. Uh, Chief Kyle Knight uh, from Harbor Springs, Chief Todd Woods from Mackinac City uh, Police Department, and I'm Chief Joel Jeff from Alpena City Police Department. Uh, we are here tonight actually as representatives from the Northern Michigan Chiefs of Police um, to honor and to give thanks to our good friend and colleague, Director Matt Breed. Now these have to go on. So, <laughs> uh, But before we go to that, uh, just a little bit about our group. Uh, the, the MACP, or the Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police, uh, basically divides the state into five regions or districts. And our group, the Northern Chiefs, is the largest, and we represent um, agencies as far south as Nuego, which is just north of Grand Rapids, everything north of there, and including the entire UP, so a significant area. And we are charged with, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, speaking as a collective voice for those agencies uh, so that our concerns and our opinions are heard in Lansing regarding uh, the law enforcement in Northern Michigan. So um, a group like that though, is only effective as its members, as we all know. Um, it takes dedication, you have to be engaged. And it's members like, where is he? Like Matt, <laughs> that, that make it work. And <clears throat> back in 2016, right? Matt joined Northern Chiefs and at that point, 25 years of service, he came to our group and brought a lot to the table and became a, a good, good friend. And uh, so while we are happy for our friend, we are sad for us. And uh, his retirement, while very well earned, will leave a tremendous, tremendous void in our ranks. Pardon me. So first responders, you'll often hear us refer to 
the people that we work with, and uh, not only in our departments, but neighboring departments as family. And uh, that is true. <clears throat> we are blessed to work with tremendous, tremendous people. And uh, from a very early age, whether you're a new firefighter or a new officer, you learn from the get-go that people count on you and you count on those people. So with that, I just want to say, Matt, thanks for always being there. I will uh, surrender the podium now to Chief Woods, as he has a few words and a small presentation afterwards. Thank you. Good evening. First, I want to thank the council for allowing us to be here. It's very important to honor a friend and a colleague. I couldn't agree more in regards to what Chief Knight and Chief Jet just said. I've known Director Bree for many years. I got to know him even more since I was appointed chief over five years ago. At our meetings, one of the things I noticed and will not forget was his immediate willingness to contribute to our group in whatever discussions uh, that was presented before us. He also assisted in guiding our association as well. A combination of common sense, good nature, a good sense of humor was his key to being one of the most respected individuals that I know. So director, the New Michigan Chiefs Association would like to present this plaque as a token of our admi admiration and gratitude for your 33 years of law enforcement service, your leadership, and most of all, your friendship. We wish you a very long, happy retirement. You earned it. So the Maryland Michigan Association Chiefs of Police presents this plaque to Director Matt Breed in recognition of your years of dedicated service to the Maryland Michigan Chiefs Association. Your commitment to excellence was greatly appreciated and played a major role in the success of our association. In addition, your willingness to provide guidance and leadership to law enforcement in Maryland, Michigan has provided prosperity to all. Thank you for a job well done. Could, could the rest of you officers join in on this picture so that we can get a large group picture as well? Don't be shy. You get in it too. You're in there, Rocky. You can't I get out. Do this. I used to be the debate team coach here. <laughs> it's not balanced. You guys got to switch there. No, you're fine. You're good. Okay, we got everybody. Um, wait, wait. Okay, this is very good. One, two, three, hold. One, two, three. Very nice. I got it. Look at me. Look at me. Yeah. Hold on. Ready, one? Two, three. I'm going to take one more. One, two, three. Thank you. Well, and you know that we all expressed how we felt about you last meeting. Yeah, you are so deserving. If there's another group that wants to come in and honor you the next meeting, we will come in too because we all are so appreciative of what you've done for the city. Uh, we couldn't ask for more. You brought a calmness to the to the to the police department. You brought a real relationship between the police department and the public that you serve, and and they respect you for that. From putting somebody in the high school for as a public safety liaison to all the other things that you step up and do. Thank you very much for all you do. A good team leader makes a huge difference. Very important. A good team leader makes a huge difference. Too. <laughs>
a restless boat goes nowhere. <laughs> Cliches out. <laughs> any more? Do you have any more to throw in there? Thanks for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming all the way. Alpina, wow. Mackinac. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll be able to prove our lives today. <laughs> You know, don't let anybody in the door. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is like gold time. This is like stopping time. So now we can begin again. <laughs> Next is a public hearing to receive comments concerning the city's uh, proposed community development block grant, which is called CB, CDBG rental rehabilitation grant application for the City Park Grill, and I would like to open this to the public, to anybody that has comments at this point, to the park, to the city council. Please come up, give us your full name, full address, speak at the mic, and, and address to council. Is there anybody who wishes to speak? Is there anybody online? For being done, I close the public hearing. Next is the adoption of a proposed resolution that would confirm approval of the following, several things. The August 15, 2022 uh, closed session meeting, the December 5th, 2022 regular session, as well as another closed session that we had on that same day, December 5th, 2022 uh, closed session meeting minutes. What is this, what's occurring right now? Because these are closed session meeting minutes, the council will cannot make any adjustments to it unless we go to closed session. But if they want, they can also approve these here forth right now, along with the regular session meeting minutes. So, council, do you have any questions on the regular session city council meeting minutes uh, of uh, December 5th? Ms. Walker. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I did have a question about the very last um, check register in the packet. Page. It would be page one. That's... Of page, with the backside being page 11. Okay, page 11. <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> and so the question, everybody's here already. Please. Um, is the second to last entry, Old Town Emmett LLC, to the tune of $25,000. That's my question. Yes. That, that is the uh, reimbursement for the match on main um, grant that they were able, were able to acquire for that development for their work at that location. Hmm. I'm, I'm not familiar. So Old Town LLC um, is a recipient of a of a match grant. Yeah. It's it's Tom and Dick's. Got it. Okay. So yes. they, they did a number of uh, renovations yeah. inside that, that qualified for Thank the you. grant. That makes sense. Yep. No, thank you so much. Yep. Thank you, Mayor. That's it for me. Yeah. It's just going to make a motion, but no, somebody else has to answer questions first. Yeah. Mr. Demore. Um, so I'm I'm requesting just a small um, change to the minutes if possible. So last meeting, Carla Sherman, a neighbor of the fire where the fire was located on division, asked that her comments be included in the record. I understand you're not gonna put all her comments in the record, uh, but if only we could have a notation in the record that she expressed her thanks to public safety as I expressed on the record. That would be my request. Did you get that, Sarah? I did. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Do I have a motion? I think I'd better make a motion, Mayor, to approve the minutes and the check register from last month. And the closed session, two closed session. And I would also um, like to make a motion to approve the closed session minutes from August 15th. August 15th, 2022. Okay. And December 5th. And December 5th, 2022. Thank you. Excuse me. That's good. Okay. Any, do I have a second? Support. I have a motion from Ms. Walker and a second from Ms. DeMoore 
Any other discussion, Council? I go to City Clerk back for roll. Walker? Yes. Demore? Aye. Shields? Yes. Wagner? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Mass the uh, consent agenda passes by zero. Then we'll, we'll need to pick up those minutes. Oh, those yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is a public comment an opportunity for the public. The public has the opportunity to step forward either online yep. or in person. Give us uh, your full name, full address, and address the council with a concern, a comment, anything that you wish. Is there anybody in public that wishes to speak at this point? Good evening. I'm Val Meyerson from the Petoskey District Library. And um, before I state what I came here to state, I just wanted to reiterate um, something that you all know. I'm really glad that I was here for Director Breed's uh, commendation there. And you may not know the work that he did with me personally in regards to the library and with my temple hat on. And he was always there when we needed him. And he never poo pooed any of our concerns. And um, he was just a pleasure to work with. And um, it seems like I called him a lot and he always took my phone call. So um, it's really sad that we're losing him. And I'm hoping that we get somebody just as good. It's exciting to, to have somebody new. And I'm sure that they will have that same kind of attitude of working with the public. So um, I'm glad I was here for that. Um, but really, I'm here today to tell you that the Americans in the Holocaust exhibit is finally coming. I've been talking about this for a long time. It will be in Petoskey and um, on January 5th, our opening reception takes place um, at 5.30 to 7 p.m. that evening. And it'll be in the library from then until February 14th for public viewing. And I'm just gonna step over to hand out um, some of the, the brochure here. This just gives you all the events. We've got a lot of events going on Thank you. in relation to the exhibit and hoping that um, you'll be able to attend those as well. Um, and it's really exciting. We are one of 50 libraries in the country that are getting this exhibit. We were awarded a few years ago, um, one of two in the state of Michigan, actually. So Northern Michigan University hosted in September, and then it's coming to us in a couple of weeks. And this is a nationally renowned exhibit about the Americans and the Holocaust and what we knew and what we did during that time. And it's a really thoughtful, um, exhibit that will help, it will provide a way for people to really think about what happened then and how it relates to what we're living right now. So we're excited about that. The other thing we're hosting, um, we've invited all of the Shar M ninth and 10th graders to come through with their classrooms. So we're busy scheduling those right now. We're excited because Petoskey and Harbor, which are our two kind of granting partners, both have all their, their students scheduled to come through and we've broadened it to include, um, right now we have about eight school districts scheduled to come through the exhibit. So um, it's really looking great. We've got our delivery date and are excited to have it there. And hopefully you'll all be able to join us on our opening reception or at least come through the exhibit sometime. So thank you. Well, thank, thank you, you very much. much. And thank you, Val, for all the stuff that you do. You have, you have given experiential opportunities, not just for adults, but for children. And those of us that are uh, not always experienced in some of the things that you bring forward. So thank you very much. My pleasure. Have a fun job. I hear, <laughs> I hear great comments about you out there. Uh, anyone else want to speak to council? So being done, we'll go to city manager update. I turn it over to our city manager, Shane Horn. Thank you, Mayor. A few things to uh, highlight this evening. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Um, just rewinding a few meetings we had last week that uh, I wanted to bring to your attention. Um, Planning Commission and DMB had a joint, uh, combined special meeting 
Uh, this was last, uh, when did that been on Tuesday? Um, Thursday, sorry. Um, discussed, uh, was it Tuesday? Okay. Yeah, I know. Last week was busy. Um, so really what, we, what they talked about, which was well, I think we had everyone in attendance from both um, bodies, which was really great to see a lot of good uh, feedback around the table, a lot of constructive uh, feedback, um, really looking at uh, talking about first floor residential um, downtown. That was a topic of discussion. We talked about height considerations downtown, what type of uh, appetite there may be around the room, around the table for any sort of um, consideration for increased uh, height potentially. Um, and then uh, I'm trying to remember the third thing that was on that list, you recall, Mayor? Um, that might've been it. Um, Planning Commission also met that week. Um, they talked about, uh, had a, essentially a public hearing on um, the B3A zoning district and looking at the potential um, of increasing the height from two to three stories in that district. Um, this was something that went back to them based on your input. Um, ultimately, after a lengthy discussion, they have decided to kind of study this a little closer and come up with a list of um, maybe recommendation or findings, if you will, before they before they send it back up uh, to you, um, just to give um, you all some additional um, rationale for their decision-making process. So I, I thought that was a very productive meeting as well. Um, coming up, um, we talked about a work session on, I just wanna confirm this with uh, council. We talked about a work session ahead of our regular meeting on Monday, January 9th. I um, just want to talk briefly about a topic so we can prepare from a staff um, and potentially legal standpoint uh, what your appetite might be for discussion topics. Um, just a few that I've brought forward, short-term rental. Um, one question that came up um, was maybe a, a brief overview of what we're at currently and maybe where this body would like to head. Uh, with that discussion, with that use. Um, we talked as well about an ethics policy. So we've talked about action plan updates, kind of maybe pulling um, individual items off of that and having discussion topics individually. And then just overall, I know there's some just been discussion about, you know, really trying to get our roll up our sleeves on, on policy creation slash updates that any of you might be interested in. So those are some um, opportunities, I would say. And if obviously there's a multitude of other things we could discuss as well, I really wanna to try to focus our, our work session time. Personally, I would like to focus it on maybe one topic and then branch off from there and grow from there as we move forward. But if there's any one of these that you'd like us to kind of prepare for, that type of input would be valued. If you wanna, um, think, about think about it and get back with me. That's completely fine as well. You want to? Well, if you want to do it now, that's fine. What do you have interest in? I know that Derek. Yeah, yeah I do. Um, the the economic incentives policy discussion. I that that's one I can keep um, raising raising uh, interest in. Yeah, I think Derek and I call it by a different name, but I think essentially we're thinking about the same thing. And of course, everybody knows I'm super interested in policy ethics along with that. And I don't know, an idea might be just to do an overview session of where we think policy is needed and work from there. Mm -hmm. So that's another thought. I like that idea of getting a summation of where chip picking and choosing and putting some stepping, what are we going to look at first? I like that on the ethics policy piece because I think it's very broad and can go in many directions. Ms. Walker. 
Thanks, Mayor. Um, I think that to not lose momentum on the action plan, we have kind of postponed that. We were gonna maybe thinking about meeting in December and we decided that that just, the timing wasn't right and that there were too many too many meetings and too much things happening, especially with the holiday season. So I would like to see us at, at least within the first quarter of the year, focus on our action plan updates um, and creating new action items if, if the group decides that that's the direction that we wanna go in. Or are we moving some that are on the list? Exactly. Because I, I feel update, that it's, uh, it's pages and it's stuff <laughs> that would take 10 years for a city to, to get to in some respects. So I, I think it would be better to get smaller chunks that are doable. Okay. I concur with action plan uh, being a priority, uh, Mayor. <laughs> and, uh, not waiting until too many months into the year to have an action plan for the year. Mm -hmm. And it's, so it, it feels like that could be early. I, I mean, I like the other thoughts as well. Like that. I feel like I've done some learning on short-term rentals and I almost feel like that could be covered in a presentation maybe at a council meeting. Um, it's complex, but I don't think it, it, it'll take long. Um, but okay. Yes, yeah. Good more. Well, I just wonder too what my colleagues' appetites are for maybe a once a month or something because we have so many things to tackle. And I don't disagree that the action plan updates and there, there's a lot. So I don't know what the thoughts are and how often. Well, you guys named three things, and specifically the action plan, the economic stimulus type of a situation, um, and as well as policy and ethics. And maybe if we take one of those each month right now mm -hmm. to start with. Is that okay? So it sounds like the action plan is probably start with the action plan. Can we then go to, to Mr. Moore's policy and ethics? Because that could at least get a, a look at it and then come to the economic piece. Sounds good. Is that okay? So just logistically, would you like this to be the first council meeting of the month? Mm -hmm. is, does that make sense? Do you want to schedule like a, so it's routine going forward here for a while? So the first council meeting of the month will have a work session ahead of the regular meeting. Yes. That'll start at 530. So yes. for the first meeting, yes. sounds yes. good to me. That's three, that's January, February, March. I don't know. I don't think we have a meeting in April anyway. So that would give us three meetings and we can always schedule accordingly from there. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I mention something? Please. Um, I didn't realize what STR was until oh. Brian just spelled out the acronym for me. So that was something that I had mentioned um, to Shane after um, a series of um well, I guess just concerns about like where short-term rentals are located and who's who's allowed, what certain zones it's allowed to be. So like, it would almost be like a mapping exercise potentially, but also like an exhaustive list of who's been grandfathered in as well, I believe. There is a list. I have, I think you guys have a list, yes. But, okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I think that'd be good to, uh, to um, possibly the February first, Second meeting, is okay. that okay? Yes. I know it's an issue. Um, I have people laugh when I, I mention, they come up and say, well, I have neighbors renting, you know, that are renting it on a weekend basis. And uh, we know they're not permitted to do so. To do so. Um, okay. We are having a code enforcer though. Or I, yes, we're... we're hiring a code enforcement officer for our 23 budget, as well as we have funds allocated for some software that runs a, uh, what's the proper term for it? Um, it's running in the background, looking, it's doing a search for folks that are advertising for these um, uses. And obviously it, it lets us know this address is out there. You know, when we don't have a lot of time to scours um all the different platforms that are out there that are advertising this cape this opportunity for folks to to take advantage of so having a algorithm that's kind of working in the background pulling that mm -hmm. data and providing it to us is something that's in our budget to purchase as well sounds great thank you for that feedback that's very helpful yeah 
Back to the yes. update. Um, and then, uh, oh, um, I also would like to um, apologize. We're asking for a lot of your time here, uh, but based on our RRC status, we need to have really an annual planning commission slash city council combined meeting. As I look at the calendar, and this is a five, January is a five um, week month. So looking at that fifth week of January, it's a slow week for us from a public meeting standpoint. So either that Monday or Tuesday as a potential um, council planning commission combined date, if we could, can you guys give him some idea if there's something that you say right away? I know one of those two days is uh, no way, no way. And we can look at possibly the other one. But he does have to talk to the planning commission as well. So where are you at with this? I'm okay with either one. I'm, I'm fine okay. with either one. Don't have my calendar in front of me. Um, I, I, I think Tuesday is better, but um, let, me you can let, let me know. Yeah, yeah let me know. know. Next. I'm also working just as we're planning. Um, I'm working with um, and Derek as uh, council member Shields is helping me coordinate a meeting with um, a few specialists on deer herd management and ways to do that uh, proactively and effectively. So we're looking at potentially February or March to have a representative from from DNR. Um, and an expert in this area kind of co combined do a presentation to council and the community. So we're, we're narrowing our focus on that. A few, a few overall project status updates. So we as staff have been very busy um, working on some pretty large projects, as you all know. So just give to give a brief overview of where we're at currently. So the lofts project, lofts at Lumber Square, as you know, we you approved the Brownfield plan, uh, city council approved it. It's actually going forward to Emmett County Board of Commissioners, um, not tomorrow night, um, at six o'clock. So that's on their agenda to approve the Brownfield plan for that uh, specific project. We're also having bi-weekly meetings with the uh, developer for the Michigan Maple Block uh, building as they put together a plan. They're currently doing uh, the Brownfield plan and a phase two environmental. As you know, this is a mixed use development. Um, it's slightly evolving um, as we talk. They initially wanted or thought about 300 units. These would be affordable workforce slash attainable housing units. Um, they kind of reduce that down to the latest version was just about 220 units. Um, so they're looking at a couple of variety of housing options. So it's not it's not just a, a cookie cutter, if you will. It, it, it'll look um, uh, have some variety to it. So they're they're working on their plan now and uh, going forward we'll have bi-weekly um, updates with that group and make sure that we're responsive to their questions and needs uh, going forward. Yes. Or Mayor, I have a question. Yeah, please. Um, can you confirm that Michigan Maple Block property has sold and transferred ownership? I cannot officially confirm that. All I can say is there's a option on it that I don't know what the date. Um, for instance, if the if the environmental and or something else comes back and it and it essentially kills the project, that that developer can back away from it. So there's an option on the property. Just waiting for some of the due diligence stuff to be complete. Got it. Thank you. 424 Emmett Street. I thought we may have that in front of you this evening. Uh, developers not quite ready yet. Uh, they're working on their plan. So this is the redevelopment of the former Hotel um, Del Rey. Um, this would be 12, again, workforce attainable uh, housing units uh, really redeveloping a blighted, severely blighted um, location, historical location. So we're anxious to work uh, with the developer um, on that project as well. So I, I would anticipate that being in front of you the first meeting in January. Um, so we can we can set those public hearings and get that uh, Oprah application um, in a final form ready for submission. 
Uh, those projects will weigh slope restoration. So Kendall and I are in constant communication with Baird, our consultant out of Wisconsin, that's working on the slope restoration of the original location. Um, we had a very productive community conversation about this a month or so back. Um, we submitted a, a coastal, uh, what's the name of that grant? Coastal, uh, I, I've lost it, but a, a grant opportunity from the state that would really allow us to design, uh, capture our design engineering costs to get us to a bid ready package. So that has been submitted. We will find out if we were for successful with this grant, uh, likely by the end of February, early March, um, which would be outstanding if we can if we can acquire that those grant funds to be able to do that. So we're working diligently on that. We're meeting monthly with a steering committee uh, of folks that are really interested in, in seeing that uh, project move forward. Now I mentioned to you a few weeks back about a community economic development uh, fellowship opportunity that I have submitted an application for. This would provide us uh, a college graduate that has a planning degree that is really just needing to get some experience. And so the only financial commitment that we would have in this is, is $10,000. The, the organization pays for the rest of the cost to provide that um, opportunity to um, to a grad as well. So we're, we're, we'll find out about that in early January as well. So I'll keep you posted on that. Uh, just overview of the public safety director position has been posted. We posted that on the December 12th. Uh, we posted it in those three locations as well as sent out a community survey. Uh, so folks can scan the the QR code. It's a very simple, I believe there's only five or six questions. Um, and I'll just share one feedback that I got. One of the questions was, what qualities would you like to see in a new uh, public safety director? Something to that effect is the, is the wording. And one response was, Matt Breed 2.0. Uh, <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cute. <laughs> um, I think that's all I had. Now, nope. a few things uh, I wanted to kind of push out. Uh, downtown Petoskey is still do, uh, seeking photos uh, for their photo contests. They'll have, uh, I think this goes until the end of the calendar year. So December 31st is the cutoff date for that. So if you're uh, an enthusiast and, and certainly there's uh, some beautiful scenery around us that we enjoy every day. So we encourage people to take part of that and put help with this calendar together. And then New Year's Eve, the Crooked Tree Arts Center hosts a family-friendly event from five to nine on New Year's Eve. A lot of different activities that night or that afternoon, evening. Uh, so we certainly encourage families to come out and take part of it. They even, um, I'm told, drop a little uh, ball drop. Uh, ball drop. Uh, so we have our own. Nothing little. Nothing little, sorry. <laughs> So, <laughs> so that's all I had. Any questions for me? We also have the uh, holiday. Yeah, I'm going to let you take that one. Okay. Um, we, if you're ready to do it now, we have a slide. We'll you have a up. slide for it? Mm -hmm. okay. We have a question from Derek. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, Mayor Horn, uh, since council requested that the uh, Planning Commission take another look at the B3A. Did they give, is there, is there a timeline on that or they'll get back to us on, on their plan, their, their schedule for when they can look at that again? Yeah, they didn't, I don't, and there was a couple of council members there. I don't recall a timeline presented at the discussion. Um, I, I think they want to really try to put some thought into this and, and come up with some again, some rationale for their decision other than simply just taking a, a vote or a position on it. Um, but I would anticipate, you know, over the course of the next few months, um, this coming back up and and then them taking a, a deeper dive on it. Okay. And with the uh, coastal grant, that's um, mm -hmm. cost my finish for that. Yes. Would, uh, is there, would this, there's going to be no rounds of SPARC grant. Is that something that the city is looking at also uh, applying for the, the similar type of um, project. 
Yes, thank you. Um, we have been instructed the first round um, is likely not something that we would be successful for. Those are for uh, more for uh, disadvantaged communities potentially. So we, we are going to prepare, obviously see the first round, see where that's at. There's, I believe there's three rounds of this that'll all happen uh, in 23. So we'll obviously evaluate what was successful the first round and, and be prepared for that second round, but we're certainly gonna apply for that. Awesome. Thank you. Any other questions for the city manager? Well, next we'll move to. Do you want to do that now? Or? Do it right now. Okay. Let's get it over with. Let's put the ambient on. Uh, what happened was uh, we had a holiday light contest for Petoskey. It was on the website. Um, I, I uh, she had a beautiful flyer that Sarah made for us. It was on the city website as well as distributed. And uh, we ended up, we didn't feel it was important for her to go and say, you have to uh, register for this. It was too short a time. And we felt there are people that do their lights and do not really follow the newspaper. So we uh, opened it up. There were seven categories up here. Uh, and uh, to, for the judges, Friday night, uh, there were people for the last couple of days coming to me saying, can we be a judge? And I said, get a car and get some people with you. Go out and judge it from six till nine and stop by my house at nine o'clock and we'll see where we're at. And it was amazing how 13 people around the table that brought in all these ideas with addresses how similar the winning ones were. The winning ones were on every list. Uh, they were either first, second, sometimes somebody put a third one on, but uh, Dave Firely's family donated $200 cash for the first place. Uh, we also had donations from, hmm, we also had donations from uh, the wine guys. Thank you very much. These are all $100 certificates. Um, Bill Morris, Southwoods, Julian Tomatoes, tequi uh, My Tequila Bar and Grill, uh, as well as the downtown merchants put in $100 for one of the place, one of them. The, the uh, top one, I, I'll tell you, I'll give you one place to go see if you want. And that's down by the old football field on Standish Avenue, the Calchet Place across the street. I, I got to tell you, uh, you want to also go, they're, they're all good. Um, I was surprised at what the people picked. I had no involvement with picking. I drove a car with four, three, four people yelling out what they thought. They all had their papers. So it came down where uh, Harvey Street, Beach Street for the best tree. Uh, take a ride and go see them. Even we even have one called the Griswold House Award. <laughs> Those people were so thrilled when I went this morning to drop that off at about 8 30. Uh, they were just one of them was going out to work and the wife was still there and they were just so happy that they had won. <laughs> and so they said they're headed to Phil uh, to Fillmore really soon to, to have supper. <laughs> so um, make sure you get out and get an opportunity to just look at Adam. They're on the website. Sarah was kind enough to do a map in the in the location. So you can't miss them. That's great. Anything else? Questions? What a blast it was. Uh, we're looking forward to it again next year. We may change different categories a little bit up. Uh, you might want to go up to Pearl Street and see the best tree, Christmas tree in town. I think it, uh, I hate to say this, rivals the city's mm -hmm. Toski's Christmas tree downtown. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah, yeah. <laughs> we should. Yeah. Huh? I know. Wow. Mm. They were so thrilled when we took the sign because all of them have a sign in the front that says you are a winner, by the way. So every, every all seven of them have signs in their front yards by the road. So you'll see where they are when you drive by. So it was a new passion I had. I don't know. But what I want to think is Shane and especially Sarah, because this was started at about Thanksgiving time. And they jumped on it with me and said, sure. And Sarah was the one with the magic hands pulling it all together. So thank you.
That's all. New business. Let's keep moving. Adoption of proposed resolution authorizing the submittal of the CDBG grant re rehabilitation for the city park grill and designating the city manager to execute any necessary documents pertaining to the giant to the grant uh, agreement. And I turn it over to Shane. Thank you, Mayor. So this is a an opportunity to really address some of our master plan um, initiatives. Uh, it's it's prominently displayed in our livable Petoskey master plan to look at opportunities to renovate and revitalize uh, residential above retail in our central business district. So this certainly helps you know address that, checks that box, if you will. This provides uh, five new uh, uh, locations that currently don't exist for affordable uh, housing opportunities. Um, this is a, a, a grant opportunity. So this is this is one that um, we as the city will will apply for on behalf of uh, the the applicant. Um, the funds are simply a, I shouldn't say simply. Uh, the funds are a, a, a pass through. Um, so if, if we're successful in, in getting the grant, um, the funds come to us, we get invoicing from contractors and facilitate payment through city through the city, uh, utilizing that reimbursement uh, through the grant. Um, so we're, we're excited about this. This is this is a heavier lift for us as staff. There's a lot of involvement and Andrea's here with Housing North. Andrea will play and continue to play a big role in partnering with Zach and I to make sure that there's a number of milestones that we need to be um, aware of. And between the three of us, we're going to hold each other accountable to make sure that we uh, hit those milestones. So in front of you is, and I think Andrea said it best before the meeting, this is a kind of a pre-application, if you will, that the mayor has in the packet, the mayor has uh, signed um, essentially the, the first pre-application, if you will. We had a conversation. He certainly supported it. Um, mm -hmm. But right now what we have is simply an LOI. An LOI is um, something we can pull out of if something is not, if you're not comfortable with something. It, we haven't really committed the city to anything at this point. Obviously, going forward, there's going to be a multitude of documents headed your way that you will um, be reviewing and you'll have your hands on and um, more public hearings going forward. So there's a lot of things involved with this particular grant. However, we all know putting these type of projects together requires um, incentives. When you look at bringing these, bringing these uh, uh, developments up to code, from a fire suppression standpoint, from an ADA standpoint, these are historical structures. They just didn't think about those things um, then. So making this work from a pro forma standpoint really requires us to um, uncover every sort of rock that we can to, to make this uh, uh, doable, if you will. So uh, the, the owners ownership group is here uh, this evening. I will, on behalf of, of Dick Dynan, just disclose to you that Dick um, uh, provides labor attorney services to the city during our collective bargaining sessions with our groups. Um, in talking with Jim Murray, he's very comfortable that there's not a conflict um, as such, but thought it would be good just to disclose that to, to this body. Um, certainly Dick can answer any questions concerning his involvement with the city, but it's really not, doesn't pertain to this grant um, directly. So, but we wanted to disclose that to you just in case down the road, somebody brings it to your attention, you, that you're aware of it. Um, again, you know, either Dick or, um, or anyone with the organization can answer direct questions, but in your packet is a pretty detailed application. Um, again, this is the first part of a lengthy process, but 
Um, so we have until March 31st is when the LOI um, kind of expires. So we have some pretty significant milestones to hit and, and reach before March 31st. So again, we're gonna be talking about this project um, for many, many meetings going forward. And uh, from a, ultimately at some point in this process, the grant funds will cover the cost of a grant administrator, which will be a relief, I think, to Andrea, myself, and Zach, having that person that can um, be there. Uh, the grant will support that. That's not a city fund funding um, requirement. So, so that's kind of the project overall. I, I can certainly ref, uh, refer back to the ownership group that's here for any direct questions that you might have. Also, do you have any questions? Mr. Miller. Thank you. Um, I think this first one is for Shane. Um, well, of course, in concept, I fully support this. We desperately need more of this type of housing. But as Mr. Dynan will appreciate, as a fiduciary of the city, that's the purpose of my question. So as far as the role of the city, which you've described as a pass-through, again, I'm new to this. And so my question is, do we know at this juncture if that role presents any increased liability at all for the city? And I have had this conversation with Jim briefly. I, I think with anything, um, anything because we are the pass-through agency, we'll receive funds from the state, we'll transfer those funds out. There's always liability in those scenarios. Um, there's liability really, um, you know, at eight o'clock when we open the door to City Hall, you know, we can't anticipate what may or may not happen. Um, so I guess a simple way to answer your question is, yeah, there's there's probably a little increased liability doing this. Um, but I think when we look at being able to bring affordable workforce style housing, you have to take those chances. You have to take those. You have to stretch yourself a little bit. Not that we want to put the city in any sort of um, legal bullseye, if you will, but there's enough people working on this project, enough checks and balances in place that I think we're comfortable. Thank you. And then the second is, should I go ahead, Mayor? Oh, please. Okay. Um, and then the second is just this reference that these units would be maintained for at least five years, which again, I can't ever get my lawyer head out of my head. So that's kind of a mushy set of time. And I wonder if, you know, is that specifically required? And then really my next question is more for my colleagues too. Is there an avenue to guarantee this be maintained beyond that period of time legally? Is that a negotiation matter? Is it even possible? And if you don't know the answer, it's just something I'd like to know the answer to. Same to no. that. Yeah, I, I, I can. And we will have uh, a separate agreement with the de with the developer, a developer agreement, if you will, that we can uh, talk with our, our specialists with MEDC. Their requirement is a minimum of five years. We can go beyond that through a development agreement with the, with the ownership group. If this body desires to go something beyond that and there's an agreement that we can reach, certainly we can do that outside of um, uh, CDBG's process. We just have to commit to it uh, to at least that five year mark. But if we can reach an agreement with the ownership group to extend that out, then certainly that'll be part of a development agreement. Thank you. Anyone else? Ms. Walker. Just to clarify on the acronym, LOI is letter of intent. Letter of intent or letter of interest. I think they're kind of interchangeable. Thanks. Anyone else? Mr. Wagner. <laughs> um, we have Andrea here. I'd love any comment on you know what you know about this. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking a year ago we approved her funding, um, our little piece of it. And I, as, as you were presenting, Shane, your manager reports the number of things we have going on related to housing. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm glad we've provided a little funding again. Well, I would like to thank you <laughs> for that funding. And I'm really excited to bring this project to something we've been working on since, what, May, maybe. But um, as Shane said, it's consistent with your, you know, I'm not in the business of telling 
communities what they need to be doing or how to do it, but it is consistent with your master plan. And anytime a community goes through the headache of becoming RRC certified, like that's a, it's a huge lift. And that has really clearly communicated your priorities and commitment, you know, to this process. And the reason to go through something like that is so that you can have access to some of these funding mechanisms that are otherwise really, really difficult for us in our rural communities to get our grubby little hands on. That being said, it's not a picnic and it still needs to have sort of that perfect project. And this one, I will say from a community standpoint is, I believe that perfect project. It's a, a beautiful historical building that we all recognize. It's a it's a, a cornerstone of our business district. You know, this is a, a group of owners that we're very comfortable with and have a long history with. Um, and their build team is is the same for them, you know, and, and we're not displacing anyone in this process. And I think that's really significant, as we all know, to unhouse somebody or have to ask somebody to shift. There really isn't a way to make something like that possible. So all of the things aligned in this in this project in particular, but I think the heavy lift that we're going through right now with city staff and and myself um, will get easier as more projects come forward. You know, this is the first one so far at all in Petoskey, which is a really, really, really big deal. And after that, hopefully they'll get a little easier. We'll all get a little bit more comfortable with the process. And we'll start to see the attention of the statewide, you know, programs and funding mechanisms really become more focused on our Northern areas, which we've seen with the, the missing middle housing grant coming to, Habitat for Humanity and the Lofts at Lumber Square, you know, and something like this where the MEDC and MISHTA, you know, and um, the other the other state programs are really, they can't ignore us anymore. So this is, this is, this is a really cool thing and I'm really proud and happy to be involved in it. Thank you. I know we've been involved with this up on the Wakazoo property. I believe we did a CBDG grant for a rental rehab up there. Yeah, and I think yeah, we're and, it, and it went well. And I think it's you know it's what we need. We need more life in the downtown, more ability for people to walk to work um, and live downtown. Mr. Shields, thanks, Mayor. I just want to voice my strong support for this project mm -hmm. and um, for everybody involved in embracing the chaos. And, uh, you know, it may be uh, feel overwhelming, but uh, pushing through, I applaud you for doing that and um, look forward to the city, um, you know, continuing to play this role and, and support. And, and it sounds like this is, this is dependent on the city, uh, this is being the entity to make it happen yes. as a pass through entity. So, I, yep. so, um, so thanks to the staff. And, and I guess one question is an MEDC grant and being RRC certified, do MEDC staff, how do they help? Or would, I mean, I'm sure they're involved in this process as well. Yeah, we will have a grant handler, so to speak. That's that's what I call it. it. A particular staff member that will be seeing us through the entire grant application process, like Shane said, or Manager Horn said. Um, Shane. <laughs> we work very closely together. Yeah. Um, that this letter of intent period only gets us up into that final grant application, which is which will be the end of March. So we're hustling through this. And once we have that application in, we will be assigned an individual from the MEDC that will be working very closely with the grant administrator and making sure that, that it gets carried through from there. Mr. Thanks. Wagner, I'd like the motion to, do we need a motion? Yes, we do, as we've already said. Motion to approve the proposed resolution for the CDBG rental rehab program. Yes. I have a motion from Mr. Wall. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Wagner, a second from Ms. Walker. Any other discussions? Public wish to weigh in on this. They're gone. Good public. Okay. I go to Sarah Beck for roll. Wagner. Yes. Walker. Yes. Tamor. Mm -hmm. Aye. Shield. Yes. Murphy. Yes. Broken pass is 5 0. Congratulations. Looking for <laughs> seeing you in the next six months. <laughs> Every month. <laughs> Can we help with the demo? Yeah. <laughs> 
Mr. Chairman, the heavy weather really did not sit at that seat up by the by the bar, that he really stood at the other end. Oh, okay. <laughs> My grandparents used to say he always stood at the front of the bar. I don't know what they were in there for. <laughs> Yeah. Next to the books of proposed resolution that would also those final amendments to the city's 2022 annual budget. I turn that over to our city manager, Shane Hart. Thank you, Mayor. So this is uh, kind of a little bit of housekeeping. End of the year. Obviously, we're at the, in the home stretch. Um, uh, where we have another 10 days uh, for the for the calendar year. Uh, budget year. Um, so, as as good as we um, are, we think in in estimating revenues and expenditures, we we there's still things that happen in the course of a budget that are out of our control. Um, that's why we kind of um, kind of tie, tidy up our our end of year uh, budgeting. It's a, it's a requirement with our from our auditor to cl clean things up, and we can't obviously have deficit uh, line items. So. This is a to clean that up. Um, really, the the changes that you see uh, in front of you are really as a result of um, some grant opportunities that um, we were not able to um, receive the grant dollars. So that means less revenue when we look at parks uh, spe specifically. Um, so if we weren't able to get the revenue, these are these are pay as you go type scenarios. So. We didn't get the revenue, which means we didn't expend the, the uh, expenditure for the project. So you'll see in the general fund revenues that uh, we have a, almost an eight hundred thousand dollar difference between what we budgeted and what um, what the amendment actually will be. Uh, again, that is the uh, the board property purchase in the winter sports park improvement project um, that we've submitted grant opportunities for. Uh, and still waiting on that. So that's that adjustment. Public safety is um, we had a we had a significant period of time where we were down staffing with public safety, which results in more overtime expenses. So this is a true up there to um, to uh, elevate that and and make sure that we're addressing our overtime um, that we ran over budget on. So that's why um, the public safety. Um, so that's that's overall the, the reasoning for the big uh, differences is revenue that we did not realize and we're still waiting on from a grant standpoint. It's going to be very challenging. And as you probably understand by now, to get a grant revenue within the, the, the budget year and actually get those uh, grants um, expended in one budget cycle is almost impossible these days as we have supply chain issues and other things that we're experiencing. So likely this will be a recurring thing that we'll unfortunately have to see going forward. But um, we obviously will still put in our best foot forward for any sort of grant opportunity. That'll always be the case, um, but we'll have to do some amendments as grants get pushed out or delayed just based on a lot of different factors that are out of our control. But so that's that's this item in front of you. It's kind of an annual thing that we go through um, to kind of chew up our budget. Do I have a motion to accept it? So moved. I have a motion from Ms. DeMoore. Second the motion. I have a second from Mr. Shields. Now, Council, do you have any questions or comments? City Manager on this. Ms. Walker. Yeah. So could you just walk us through the beginning of it? So general fund revenue adjustments include ARPA grant. $301,200 in public safety. Yeah, so and this was before I arrived here. So there, there was an allocation in the budget with the thought uh, that the first tranche, if you will, of ARPA funds would be dedicated or, or go into public safety for essentially revenue replacement. Um, obviously, we had that discussion collectively as a body. You provided me that feedback. Based on that feedback, we pulled out the 301, 200 is that first uh, deposit uh, of ARPA dollars that we received. So we pulled that back out of 
uh, the public safety fund. It's now in a, in a um, deferred revenue account. That's the whole amount of 604,000 ish um, is sitting there untouched, ready for um, this body to, to make those decisions going forward. Yes. Thanks, Mayor. Um, um, it does make sense, but I, I do have a follow-up question. So, so ARPA funds to the tune of $301,000 were budgeted in the 2021 process for 2022 and put as a placeholder and approved by who to go into the public safety budget? Again, I can't... I can't speak to that because I wasn't, you know, in this position, but I'm assuming that when the budget was under construction, there was, we kind of knew at that point, probably likely that what our allocation was going to be. Um, there was some discussion that public safety was, and it, and it still is, uh, an authorized use of those funds, revenue replacement wise. Again, I, I can't speak to how that allocation was was made um i don't i don't know at the time if that was part of your budget package or if that was something that happened administratively after the fact i really can't speak to that i do not recall that yeah. in person discussion yeah. absolutely okay. do not recall any public record that i'm sure it was actually, administrative i'm sure that it was administratively done by administrators that are no longer here okay This is putting the money back <laughs> instead of utilizing it because you guys said we want to talk about the 600,000. <laughs> it was tentatively going to go into the budget. <laughs> it was pulled out, it was put into here, and it had to be documented that it was pulled out. So your $602,000 is still there. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I do. I do understand that. I do understand that it's that these are general fund adjustments that will happen. I am just looking back to what has transpired, and if I look through public note, I wouldn't find that conversation anywhere. So what you just said to me now makes sense um, that it was done administratively. Okay, I have another question, if I may. Yes, please. Thanks. So then the second one would be state and local grants to the tune of 827000 for the Borough property purchase. So that would be the Skyline purchase mm -hmm. um, located in Bear Creek Township um, on behalf of Parks and Rec. And so that is a grant that still hasn't been dispersed because of the timing is what That's you're right. saying. Correct. Okay. Yes. And then winter sports, we'll Same. That, rentals. The same with the winter Thank sports. You for your help. Yep, I yep, appreciate absolutely. it. Thank you for answering my question. Mr. Moore. Just real quickly, one thing for me that would be helpful, and it's really just uh, if if Ms. Plath was able to put brackets around the deletes and pluses on the ads or something like that, it might be a little easier to interpret. We'd appreciate it. I'd appreciate it. No, we've had that conversation yeah. in-house, in and we'll certainly make those adjustments because I, I was kind of reading it the same way. Um, yep. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. Any of anybody else? Miss Walker. I have one more question. Thank sure. you. So every year our auditor has a set of recommendations of things that we need to do budgetarily to make amends for the discrepancies that happen at the end of every calendar year. And so is this what they're referring to when they talk about amendments to the budget? No. No. It is what they are not looking at specific expenditures. They are looking at um, how you how you how you how you register and how you keep track of the funds. They do not make decisions and say you really should be spending three hundred thousand yeah, really, yeah. this or that. Right. Okay. But what they look at is when they audit after the after the fiscal year or the calendar year is over with, mm -hmm. they look at where budgets have gone over and they suggest a process for resolving that so that from year to year, we don't go over our budget. 
And every year it's about the same amount. It's between like 93 and $96,000. And it's always from the same two, two departments. So I'm wondering like, is this the process that they'll be running to? Um, or is that something, a different process that we have to undergo and when we're when we're when we're reviewing and proposing our budget for the next fiscal year, I just want to make sure that we're doing our due diligence and the same thing doesn't appear year to year to year to year to year in our audits. But there'll always be amendments. Always there'll okay. always be amendments, and that's that's not specific to the city of Potofsky. That's everywhere you go. There'll always be amendments because things change that we cannot anticipate. Uh, the budget is a plan, and as we know, plans are subject to change. Things happen, COVID happens, um, supply chain issues happen, things happen that are out of our control that we have to adjust. And, and you have we have to show those adjustments to our auditors because at the end of the year, we can't have line items that are negative. So we have to either do interdepartment transfers okay. or if there's not a capability of doing that, we have to do these sort of uh, amendments to make sure that our, our budget line items are at least um, neutral you will so we can't we can't we can't have a budget that ends the year in a negative position you know okay. line item wise and it seems to me um that it's also things that are related directly to the general fund mm -hmm. is that the case as well well i mean i think that's probably the the, the one that's most important uh for for us the the other funds are um like Magnus, the marina, we're actually making revenue there. Um, Your utility. Our utilities. Um, so yeah, we're focusing a lot of attention on uh, the general fund uh, because that's that's where a lot of the the day to day stuff happens that um, tends to be in flux, if you will, and occasionally. So, and it's not restricted stuff either. If it's restricted things, then it. We stay the course completely. We're staying on budget with mm -hmm. that, right. but that general fund stuff yeah. ebbs and flows according to possible cost overruns or lack of. All right. I think you've answered my questions. Thank you so much. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, let's see. I have a motion. Mm -hmm. I have a motion from uh, Ms. Demore, and I have a second from Mr. Shields. Could you please call roll? Demore? Aye. Shields? Yes. Wagner? Yes. Walker? Yes. Murphy? Yes. Motion passes. You know, complete the budget situation. Now, last time for you to speak this year to the public, <laughs> this year. Miss Walker, Ward Four. Ward Four, the win. Um, really, I have. I don't think I have anything to share. I'm just grateful to be serving um, the city of Petoskey, and um, it's always an educational and very humbling experience to serve on city council. And I look forward to the next three years of serving. So, thank you so much. Ward Three. Three years into my term. <laughs> we have one year left. I, I, I feel the same way about serving the citizens of Petoskey, and um, I continue to hear um, unsolicited great things about Shane and our, our choice for a city manager and his presence at events and at commission meetings and something that apparently people weren't used to seeing in the past. So, Shane, kudos on that. And then the last thing is uh, Val and running our library and being involved in our temple and She's the president of our Sunrise Rotary and presenting tomorrow morning. She's basically, I think we're having a Hanukkah celebration. So happy Hanukkah and thank you. <laughs> Mr. Shields. Thank you, Mayor. This is a, a beautiful time of the year. It's a special time of the year, but I also want to recognize that how it can be a painful time of the year. And I, I know there's been some tragic passings in, in our community in War II and in and, the and, uh, school system. And so, yeah, just uh, you know, sending out special thoughts of, of um, comfort to those who are also in pain this season, and encourage all of us to keep serving. I have the neighbors that were out shoveling each other's driveways uh, this morning, so that's beautiful to see. And also, just uh, let's smile at each other uh, when we see each other walk down the street. Ward one, Mr. Moore. 
Well, just to echo the gratitude for the opportunity to serve the community and to serve at this table with folks who come informed, have different perspectives, but contribute in a constructive way to the dialogue. I'm grateful for that. On a practical matter, however, I've had a terrific view since I've been on city council of that mug right there that says Lakeland, Tennessee on it. And so on behalf of my colleagues and I, I'm going to hand this down to the city manager in the effort to improve my view. Thank you. And thank him so much for being with That's us. Beautiful. Thank you. Please, uh, just quickly, um, we were able to get together as a staff for a little Christmas uh, evening Friday and um, it was very nice, uh, certainly appreciate the opportunity to get to know, um, you know my team and, and work uh, as a staff. And one of the things I mentioned to them, which I would repeat here is just encourage you to slow down, enjoy the moment. Sometimes we get so, uh, involved in stuff this time of year that pulls us in a lot of different directions. And so my encouragement is to, you know, um, hang on to those you love and, and give them a nice hug and just be close to them, enjoy the moment. And uh, uh, sometimes we've commercialized this season to the point where it's all hustle, hustle, hustle. So uh, my encouragement to my staff and to you all is let's enjoy this time with our family and friends. Boy, it's hard to follow up on this. <laughs> Other than to say, I am so, I'm, I'm so blessed. I'm so lucky to be on a board with you guys because, and with our staff, there's, there's no city better than the city of Petoskey. I, I think everybody agrees with that. And uh, just make sure, like Shane said, enjoy life, smile and be happy, three things, and everything will work out fine. We'll see you next year on January 9th. Possibly we'll see you if, with your grandkids or children at, uh, what is it, the Crooked Tree on that. Otherwise, carry on, I call this meeting over. This is great. We've got such a great city. No, you can. Uh, do we have to file this with our taxes? Just, I, never, I, I always refuse all gifts. 